y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zoe, and today we're talking about middle grade books. It is the month of March. A lot of people coin this month as middle grade March, where they dedicate a lot of, if not all of, the month of March to reading middle grade books. Middle grade books are typically books that are aimed at a younger audience, like I would say anywhere from older elementary school to middle school. In that area. They are targeted to younger audiences, but I personally love middle grade books so much. I don't read them often, but I do read them frequently enough to be a part of my reading routine for the year. I enjoy reading middle grade because there's something really whimsical about it. It's a really nice way to break up some harder adult books that are maybe going over some harder topics. I think that there's a lot of really fantastic middle grade out there that reminds you about what it was like to be a child and have kind of the innocence that kids do. There's also just like some phenomenal authors out there that write really, really fantastic middle grade books. And so with that, I thought that I would do kind of a middle grade recommendations video, but the way I wanna do this is specifically geared towards if you typically like reading this genre, for instance, fantasy. If you like reading fantasy, then here are some middle grade fantasy books that I recommend. If you typically enjoy reading mystery thriller, here's some mystery thriller middle grade books I would recommend. Obviously, like I said, middle grade is geared towards a younger audience. So when I say mystery thriller, it's a little bit more of a loose term. You're not going to get the same intense grit and scary things as you would an adult mystery thriller, obviously. <laughs> but I still think that there's some really fun middle grade books out there that do have those elements. So I'm going to give some recommendations for mystery thriller lovers, fantasy lovers, contemporary lovers, and magical realism lovers. So let's go ahead and just jump in. These recommendations are based off of some of my personal favorite middle grade books, so keep that in mind as well. I haven't read a vast majority, but there are some that I really love. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in with some middle grade recommendations. If you love contemporary books, these are two books that I would recommend to pick up if you haven't already. These are pretty well known, so if you haven't already, I just recommend picking them up anyway. But the first one that I would recommend is Wonder. This is by RJ Palacio and it is so good. There's probably an argument for this that it's not necessarily middle grade, but when I read it, I remember it being very much told from the young boy's perspective. That's why I think that this is targeted towards a younger audience, but I recommend this for all ages. This tells the story of our main character, Augie Pullman, who was born with a facial difference that prevented him from going to mainstream school for a number of years. So once he reaches the age to go to fifth grade, he is ready to go to mainstream school, and that's where we follow his story. So we read about what it's like for him to be not only the new kid at school, but also the new kid who does have a facial difference, and what that's like, and how Oh my gosh, this book is so heartwarming and wonderful and Augie Pullman is my favorite kid ever. He's just so kind and good and I just like want to hug him. I loved him so much. I loved his family. His family was very prevalent in this story as well as his new friends and bullies and the things that he experiences. It's just such a heartwarming book and if you love contemporary stories that make you feel all the feels, I really recommend picking this one up for sure. The next middle grade book that I recommend if you like contemporary is Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli. I love this book so much. I'm trying to be more objective <laughs> when I talk about these books, but it's so hard for me to because this one is just such a personal favorite of mine. I read this when I was young and oh my gosh, I wanted to be Stargirl. I loved her with my whole heart. This follows the story of a boy named Leo and Stargirl. That is her actual name <laughs> in the book. And Leo meets Stargirl at school. Stargirl is very, very unique. She's very different. She doesn't quite fit in. And at first that's really received well by her classmates, but then they quickly turn on her and it bully her and it's the story of how Leo kind of navigates that with his friendship with Stargirl. This is a really great book. I love it so much. It's been a minute since I've read it. I know that Disney I think is coming out with the movie soon and I would love to reread it before then. I like this book so much because it 
has such a strong message of it's okay to be different and it's a good thing to be different and to embrace that and be yourself. And I just think that's such an important message for kids, for adults, for everyone. I love this book, highly recommend. The next genre that I'm going to talk about is fantasy. And I'm not much of a fantasy reader myself, but out of all of these books, out of all these genres, the fantasies are actually my favorites. I love these books so, so much. The first one I'm gonna talk about is actually an all-time favorite of mine. It's so freaking good. And it is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. If you love reading fantasy and you either want to get into middle grade or you just wanna pick up something that is middle grade but still fantasy and you haven't read this one yet, oh my gosh, please do yourself a favor. Pick this one up, it's so good. In fact, this book is actually our book club's pick of the month this month for March so if you would like to read this with us and then be a part of our live show discussion at the end of the month please do oh my goodness such a good book this tells the story of a witch named Zan who rescues a baby from the protectorate because every year they feel like they have to sacrifice a baby in order to satisfy this witch and save their town from destruction from the witch when in fact she just goes to rescue the babies because they're leaving them in the woods basically to die. One of the babies that Zan rescues, she accidentally feeds too much moonlight and she enmagics the baby and so she feels this responsibility to now raise this baby herself. And so we're following that story. There's a lot more to it than just that. It's so magical. It's so good. It covers so many good topics to talk about with kids and digest yourself as an adult reader. I love this one with my whole heart. There's themes of hope and kindness and sacrifice and love and beating the bad guys. And there's also a tiny baby dragon who's literally the cutest thing ever. So if anything, just read it for the tiny baby dragon because he is the cutest. And then the other fantasies that I recommend if you have been sleeping on this series, you are missing out Nevermore and the sequel Wondersmith. Oh my gosh, these books are so good. I am obsessed. I love this series. I cannot wait for the third one. I need it now. Nevermore follows our main character, Morgan Crow. She's a cursed child. Everyone in her town believes that if anything bad happens in the town, if a neighbor falls and breaks his leg, it's because she was born on a cursed day. She's the cursed child. It's Morgan's fault. <laughs> and because she's a cursed child on her 11th birthday, I think it was, it's known that she's supposed to die apparently. But she's whisked away to this magical world where she starts to be in competition to a attend this magical school and it's just so wonderful. A lot of people compare this to Harry Potter and it's definitely not Harry Potter. I can see why, you know, the magic school, a little bit of the chosen one trope, the cursed child sort of thing, but it's still a different story and it's just so wonderful to read. Like I enjoyed my time reading this so much and the second book, Wondersmith, was even better than the first one. So I highly recommend these middle grade books. Read them this month if you're looking for a good fantasy middle grade. So, so good. Okay, the next genre to recommend is for my mystery thriller lovers out there. That is myself as well. Please again, keep in mind that these are middle grade. So getting mystery thriller middle grade recommendations is a little difficult. They're not gonna be as dark as some adult mystery thrillers, but my first recommendation, if you are a mystery thriller lover and you're looking for something like that in the middle grade world is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I feel like you probably saw this coming, <laughs> but I wanted to bring this one up because I personally have the graphic novel edition of Coraline, and I think that the graphic novel edition is the way to go. If you like this creepy story, you've already read it and you haven't picked up the graphic novel version, I highly recommend the art is creepy. <laughs> It's actually kind of hard to believe that this is a middle grade book, but it follows the story of Coraline who moves to a new place with her parents and her parents very much neglect her. They kind of brush her off. She's super bored. She wants to be entertained. She doesn't have any friends and she feels very much like kind of a burden almost to her parents. And so she ends up one day stumbling upon this door in their new creepy house and she finds herself in a alternate reality with her parents, but they are like 
the better version of her parents and they also have creepy buttons for eyes which is so weird and so they make her deal and they say like if you give us your eyes and get button eyes you can live with us forever it's really creepy and i love it so much so if you love like a good like mystery thriller i think this is a really good recommendation for middle grade readers it is creepy if i read this as a kid it probably would have creeped me out but like there's not like a bunch of gore or anything crazy that happens. It's just like a fun thriller. Another one that I recommend that's actually kind of similar to Coraline, it gave me Coraline vibes when I read it, is this book called Juniper Berry. This is by M.P. Kalowski. And it's similar in the sense of this girl has very negligent parents. <laughs> There's obviously a theme here. Her parents are actually like really famous film stars and so they're just too busy to kind of be around her and take care of her. But once they move into this new house, they start to get really cold and really distant, like even more so than they were. And she starts to suspect that there's something going on with her parents that's not quite right. So she ends up meeting a neighborhood friend and they go out exploring in the woods. They stumble upon this certain tree which has this certain creature living in it and this creature Creature is tempting them with basically all the secrets of the world and that's all I kind of want to say I don't want to give away much more and then out of those three I would say that this one is probably the most tame as far as scare factor goes but the series nightmares by Jason Siegel and Kristen Miller is really really great I love this one so much it tells the story of a boy whose father has a new wife and he thinks that his new stepmom is basically a witch and he's starting to have all these nightmares about her being a witch and he's having a really really hard time sleeping and this sort of sleeping plague starts to take over the town which is really interesting i just thought the writing of this was really creative i think there's three books actually this is a series i've read book one and book two and i just really love our main character charlie i really like his friends i enjoyed the writing i just enjoyed the theme of kind of beating your fears like that's really prevalent in this again it's really tame it's almost kind of silly but I thought I would add this one in just in case. And then this one, I wasn't quite sure where to fit this book, but I would have regretted not including it. It could be contemporary, but I wanted to include it in the mystery thriller. I wouldn't say it's as much of a thriller. I would say it's much more of a mystery with some action-packed elements, but that is Green Glass House by Kate Milford. You guys know I love this book so much. It's now been a couple of years since I've read it, but this book is wonderful. It's so beautiful, first of all, and it's just such a fun story to read. We follow our main character, Milo, who is actually adopted, so there's really cool representation there. His parents run a inn in this smuggler's town, and it takes place during his Christmas vacation, and he just wants no one to come and stay at their inn. He wants to just spend his Christmas vacation just him and his parents. However, they start getting visitors one after another, and all of these visitors seem to be kind of linked in some mysterious way. Some things happen, some stories are told around the fire at night. Like, it's really good. It's very atmospheric. I really recommend reading this one in the winter time if you can, but this is also just a great one to pick up any time of the year, honestly. Really cool, cozy vibes. Great story, great mystery. Great little things that happen at the end, that's all I'll say. Great book, love it so much. Okay, and the last genre that I will recommend some middle grade books for <laughs> is magical realism, which this is kind of a weird genre. I always struggle with feeling like I actually understand what belongs in this genre. I have two books for this recommendation. If you love a good magical realism book, I really recommend Ghosts. This is by Raina Telgemeier, and this is a graphic novel again. There are so many good middle grade graphic novels out there. I love them so much. They're really fun to read. But this one follows the story of two sisters, Katerina and Maya, and they are moving to a new town with their parents. Katerina is the older sister and her younger sister Maya has cystic fibrosis. So there's some really interesting and good representation there. I actually ended up learning a lot about cystic fibrosis that I didn't know about previously. So I loved it for that reason. When they move to this new town, they meet this neighbor boy who takes them on a tour and starts kind of sharing these ghost stories of their town with them. So this story follows the family as it's now 
October and it's Day of the Dead. They are celebrating that. Learned a lot about that as well. And they meet some ghosts. <laughs> That's really great. This was just such a enjoyable book. I actually try and pick this one up every fall because it's just so easy to flip through and read and enjoy. And like I said earlier, I learned a lot of things about cystic fibrosis. I learned things about Day of the Dead. And it's just a really touching story about this older sister who has to see her younger sister deal with cystic fibrosis, what that looks like and how that impacts her. So I loved this book with my whole heart. I definitely, definitely recommend. It's really good. And the art style is just gorgeous. So if anything, pick it up for that because it's just fun to read. Okay, and the last book recommendation that I have is Orphan Island. This is by Laurel Snyder. This I would say is magical realism slash kind of dystopian. So it follows the story of a bunch of orphans who live on this island together. And it's been a couple of years since I've read it, but I think their age is like five to 13. And there's one child for every age. And so every time a new five-year-old comes to this island, the oldest has to leave the island. And that's why I say magical dystopian because it's kind of a different way of life for them. We learn a lot about all of the characters on this island, but mostly we're following the story of the girl who is the second oldest and so she's having to deal with becoming the next oldest on the island and really questioning what it looks like for her when she has to leave and what happens when she leaves. They basically get in this boat and they leave and they don't know where they go or what happens. It's very like, who knows what happens. <laughs> I loved this one. We read this for my book club years ago and I was actually, I think, in the minority of really enjoying this one. So I will say that this might not be for everyone. I thought it was a really interesting allegory for a bigger message, if that makes sense, reading it as an adult. I will say if you don't love ambiguous endings, you're not gonna necessarily love this one, but just keep that in mind. I still really think it's an interesting concept and book and I would love to discuss it with more people. So please read it if you're interested. <laughs> All right, Chelva, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know down in the comments below if you enjoy reading middle grade, give me some middle grade recommendations. I would love to read some more. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are. You are so loved and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!